Hello everyone! Welcome to another Let's Play of Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. My name is Anna Mardol. And I have a drink. I have my notebook here of lawyerly notes. And we are going to do another episode or another, another section uh, of uh, the Rise from the Ashes episode. I, I will say, I really have no idea. No, Chris, baby, that's my pen. You can't have my pen. You can't have my pen. Go play with your own toys. I don't really know where they are, but go play with them. Uh, I don't have any concept of where we are in terms of... Coming towards an ending, it feels like we've spent a lot of time on this. We're on the fourth part, um, but we still don't have any kind of concept of what happened on the day of the murder, which you would think... <laughs> we would need in order to bring the case to a close. So, um, since we don't have any idea what happened on the day of the murder, I have to assume that we're not anywhere near the ending yet. Um, but who knows? So, I'm going to hit back. Bloop. Oh, wait a second. There we go. I had to adjust the point. Mr. Wright, what's going on with this case anyway? Yeah, I would like to know that too. I'm a little confused. I am as well. Okay, good start. We're both confused. Huh? Well, let's see. What is going on? The victim, Detective Bruce Goodman, was stabbed to death after 5 p.m. on the 21st. Yes, I knew that. That's my pen. You're still playing with my pen. It's, it's my pen. He died in the prosecutor's parking lot and in the police department's evidence room. See, that's where I'm struggling, because you would think he couldn't do both. What's this and the evidence room part? office and the police department are 30 minutes apart by car. Well, that's what we're going to find out. Or try to at least. All right, let's do it. Glad she's in good spirits, but I'm not sure she's going to be much help with this. Don't be so sure, Mr. Wright. Huh? Look, we're in this together, right? I'll prove that these thick-rimmed glasses of mine aren't just for show. Let's go! Science awaits us! I don't really understand how she knew what we were thinking, but, um, but somehow she did. Alright, so it is February the 23rd, so two days later. 
and we're back at the parking lot. I really wanted to talk to our client, but I guess we don't get to do that just yet. You know, I really don't think we should worry about the police department murder. There wasn't even a body found there, so who cares? Uh, Emma? Yeah, it was only our victim who was killed in their evidence room. No biggie. Besides, my sister would never do such a thing. I know it. Yeah, I know, Emma. That's why we need to find out who did. That oil drum. Was it empty? The oil drum kicked over by the chief prosecutor was brimming with water. My sister erasing evidence at the crime scene? Never! Really? That's the part you have a problem with? Not the killing, but the erasing evidence part? Even though she says they don't get along, Emma really likes her sister. That's not it at all! Okay, how is she... Telepathic? I, I really need someone to explain that. It's just, we're both professionals at what we do, and I trust her. Grand, stop reading my mind. We don't know each other well enough for you to do that. Big words for a high school student. Well, whether there was blood on the floor or not, the water in that oil drum washed it all away. She's giggling. Ignore the strength of my science at your own peril, Mr. Wright! Huh? What's the grin for? This situation calls for one thing, and that is... Luminol testing fluid! I... I'm pretty sure that... There's at least one CSI that indicates that massive amounts of water, like like a flood in the, the garage, would mess with that. But it's it's been a while, so I guess I could be wrong. Luminol? Blood is sticky stuff, you know. You can't just wash it away with a little water. Even if you can't see it, it's still there. Wouldn't the police have already done those tests? Never trust anyone's eyes but your own, Mr. Wright. Just give it a try. Me? Why do I have to do it? I'm a miner! I can't even drink yet! We're testing blood stains with this, not drinking it. Here, look, I'll lend you these glasses. Huh? You had an extra pair of these things? To test for a blood reaction, just spray luminol on it. Like this, see? Press enter to spray it on. Okay, let's find us some blood stains. I... Okay, so let's try down here. I'm not allowed to go past it. I can see her eyes shining behind those glasses. So this is a blood stain? Uh, it's so... Uh. Emma, you're shaking. It's just... This is my first time seeing real blood. So 
scientific investigation in action. Okay, well, we definitely know that this is a blood stain. But doesn't something strike you as odd? Scientifically speaking, of course. What's odd about this? I would say the amount of blood seems like not very much. The perpetrator and Detective Goodman fought here, right? Don't you think there'd be a little more blood? I definitely think so! I mean... Look at all the blood on the sole of the victim's shoe! It is pretty strange. If they fought here, there'd have to have been more blood than this. Uh, hey, Mr. Wright? I'm gonna mark up the floor plans when we find a bloodstain, okay? See, I'm pretty handy to have around, right? Yeah, and this stuff's pretty handy too. I saved up my allowance to buy that. Luminol testing fluid received from one very proud looking Emma Sky. We can't be sure that the police will reveal all their evidence in court. Sometimes they fail to mention evidence that doesn't fit with their view of the case. Then let's drag that hidden evidence out into the light of day. It feels like we're really investigating a crime now, doesn't it? Why didn't you mention this before, honey? Like yesterday when you were here? Hello. I wonder how that fluid of yours would react to a nice deli box. Miss Star! You only trust your own eyes, hmm? Not bad, you two. This day old deli box is on the house. Sorry, it's just that kind of lead in doesn't really get my mouth watering. You certainly put me in a tight spot today. My apologies, Miss Star, but... No, no, it's okay. It was my fault. Oh, we know. <laughs> I witnessed everything from that security room right there. But I was afraid that wouldn't sound convincing enough, you see. I was wrong to think that. I'm sorry. Sorry? You lied on the witness stand! That's unforgivable! Little girl. Don't forget what's important here. Even if the place I witnessed the events from was different, I still saw what I saw. I saw Chief Prosecutor Skye stab a man in cold blood, and that testimony still stands. So, what if she didn't stab him at all? And certainly not with that knife, but instead was holding the evidence knife, the one that has the chipped, um, what if, what if she was holding it up in that angle, like, what do you mean this was stolen from the evidence room, or, or something like that, and Angel just utterly misinterpreted what she saw? 
that's what we're gonna go with. Ah. Uh. I swear on my honor as a detective. She stabbed Goodman. I know this photograph has something important to tell us, but what? So, you were a detective, weren't you, Miss Star? Yes, it was a long time ago. Well, two years ago. No matter how hardened the criminal, when they faced me, they coughed it up. That's why you're the cough-up queen? Coughed it up? They confessed. They babbled like babies. You know, I may seem like a demon sometimes, but I can be an angel too. Yeah, you're a real saint. I wouldn't doubt it. Every day, I dragged the dirt out of the mouths of suspect after suspect. And before long, they called me the cough-up queen. Oh, and here I thought someone had gotten food poisoning from your lunches. And you were let go? Fired? I felt that I had found my dream job when I became an investigator. And if these prim and proper prosecutors hadn't let me go, I'd still be one today. It's all because of that case. The SL9 incident. What? That feels really freaking relevant. SL9? Why is this the first time you're bringing it up? I can't show her things. I can only do that. Dang. I can only- oh, here we go. Present. What do you think about this? The SL9 incident. It's written on that knife. And on that note. Goodman. Goodman was the head detective on that case, you know. Really? That knife was evidence from that case. The murder weapon. It was due for transferal the very day that Goodman was killed. As I suspected, SL9 isn't over. Not yet. Do you think you could tell us more about the SL9 incident? Ah, uh, that's just sure about everything. Could you take a look at this? You! You said you wanted some hot tea, right? Okay, so that's her... Wow, okay, a really long I'm not going to tell you speech. Good. I was just sitting here thinking I want to waste time with this. If you think about it, I could have taken that picture from the guard room. Yeah, I was wondering about that. But even I get flustered sometimes. So you went straight to the scene of the crime? 
I rushed toward the chain link fence in an effort to stop the murder. That's when I took this photo, yes. In other words, five minutes after the crime? So... Alternate theory. He ran up to her, said, I have evidence it's really important, but I've been stabbed. She took the knife and brandished it like, what do you mean you've been stabbed? What do you mean you have evidence? What's going on? And... Then he collapsed into the trunk after having bled on her and she very quietly, in shock, just sort of looked at his dead body. That seems kind of like a weird reaction, but... People do weird things when they're in shock. I was actually, I was telling Ben, so here's the problem I think with this game is that, and it's not a problem with the game, it's just a problem with me. I, I think the game wants you to take the evidence as real and right, and you just need to come up with an alternate explanation for how the evidence happened, but the evidence is still right, if that makes sense. Whereas my thinking is like all the different ways that the evidence could be faked. So I'm trying to, to look at like, oh, but this photograph could have been, you know, photoshopped or whatever. And the game doesn't want you to do that because that's a bottomless pit that you can't recover from. If evidence is fake, then you don't know what anything is, is real, right? Um, so... So, that's the tricky thing for me. Anyway, sorry. That was just something I realized that was like, oh, so my problem is that I'm trying to work out how the evidence was faked, and instead you're supposed to be looking at it in terms of how it managed to be real and yet not the guilty thing that you think that it is. I still don't understand, though, if it is as simple as that, that she just, like, he ran up to her and he was bleeding and collapsed, why would she confess to the crime if she didn't commit it? It can't just be because she really things looked bad, because it, there's got to be more to it than that. But okay, we won't find it out sitting here talking. In other words, five minutes after the crime? Those five minutes are the whole problem. The hole in my testimony, as it were. The five minutes weren't the problem, Miss Star. You lying was the problem. Listen, little girl. I've had my testimony disregarded before. And I wasn't going to have it disregarded again. Just like that time. That time? That's all mine? Alright, let's talk to her about... Wait, was there anything else? No, 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 no. Let's talk to her about us all mine. That incident really opened up my eyes to the truth. We're nothing to them. 
Disposable. Disposable? To who? Two years ago. It was the biggest case I'd ever handled. So this was when Cowboy was a detective. And I guess she was one too. So they didn't solve it? On the contrary. It was solved quite cleanly. The criminal was caught and executed. Executed? Yes, the criminal got what was coming to him. It doesn't get any cleaner than that. The only problem was they never did find decisive evidence. Not a shred. What? But the criminal was executed, right? On the basis of evidence of a sort, made up evidence. What? You mean they executed someone with fabricated evidence? The best part came several months after the trial. Every detective involved with the case was dealt with. Some were demoted to patrolmen. Others found themselves out of a job. You were one of those. Myself. I'm one other person you know well. Wait, could it be? Exactly. Detective Jake Marshall. Oops. I mean, Police Department Security Detail Officer Jake Marshall. As professional detectives, we investigated that case from every angle. Jake was particularly determined. And then it was over. He was demoted. However, he hasn't forgotten, and neither have I. You haven't forgotten SL9? There was another side to that case, a hidden side. That's what we're after now. Shouldn't you be on? Oh, but she doesn't know that Lana's, that's just my theory. No one in their fancy offices can stop us. Wait! Those lunches you sell. There is only one reason I come to sell lunches in this accursed office. And I come here to meet old friends, boyfriends that can help me investigate. Mr. Star's, Miss Star's old boyfriends. How many does she have anyway? Just when all the detectives on SL9 has disappeared, we find new evidence. There has to be a connection! So, Rookie. It's not really new evidence, though. It's, it's old evidence that... was pulled out of storage. It seems like you're serious about investigating this case. Yes. Then you should take this. 
That's pretty. Steak with a nice butter pat on it. Uh, Salisbury steak lunch? I know a certain guy who might help you if you tent him with this treat. Do we have to talk to the LA cowboy? Miss Star? Officer Marshall, is he your. Uh, are, are you his? Are you going out? No, darling, we're fucking. Why do you want to know? I was just wondering what happened to him. A long time ago, when he was helping my sister do cases, he was so nice. He got along so well with my sister, it made me jealous. And he was nice to me too, back then. This would be when Officer Marshall was a detective. But now, he's so cold. Jake and I are merely cooperating on this investigation. We're putting the past to rest, as it were. Nothing more than that. I... I see. Thank you. Officer Jake Marshall. All right, can we go back to spraying luminol on things? Are we done with the luminol? Mister climbed over this fence. It seems so, yeah. That fence is at least nine feet high. Well, no time like the present. I think I'll give it a little try. It's okay, don't cry. Maybe there's a Lunchland Olympics team? Now I have questions about that too, but I guess it's possible that she's stayed in detective condition? That's about as red as a sports car can get. Yep, it's pretty red, all right. The body was found in Edgeworth's car trunk. And the lock on the trunk was broken, too. So, the question is, why did Miss Sky choose the car? What model car is it? I think it was called a sedan or a coupe? Something like that. Those are car types, Mr. Wright. Not models. I don't know either, honey. You're a guy, aren't you, Mr. Wright? You're supposed to know these things. Hey, we don't subscribe to that type of gender stereotyping around here. Maybe it's time I got a driver's license. This rope, is it? Yep. They laid it in the outline of the victim's body. Except they didn't because we've seen a picture of the victim's body and it was literally not in that shape. And I'm confused because so far they've been a lot better about stuff. They've, they've been careful about uh, little details mattering. So wait, the victim must have died when the killer closed the trunk on him. That's where we found the note. 221SL9, the SL9 incident. 
a case that was due for transferal the day of the murder. And the detective in charge of the case was the victim. I wonder what kind of case this SL9 incident thing was. It's kind of hard to guess, just knowing the case number. A block. This area is reserved for prosecutors. Defense attorneys are relegated to B block. I dream of a day when I will be able to park here. So... I guess we can't move in all things anymore. So this is the famous oil drum. Well, no time like the present. I'll try to kick it over myself. Hiya! That's okay, don't cry. That Lana Sky must be one strong woman. So this is the famous divider. It sure helped us knock a hole in the testimony today. Come to think of it, this divider helped our case more than the actual witness. The Great Divider! A chip off the old parking lot! It's just a wall, scientifically speaking. A ladder! A door! This must mean something! These are all repeats from before. I just wrote it generically. Let's hope so. Of course, as a scientist, I have to check what additive she used. Go to town. Hours of sweat and labor. So that's why the sauce is so salty. Okay, so I don't think we need to examine this, but oh, that's cute. Someone used a marker to write their name on this. Don't tell me you bring this with you everywhere you go. You never know when something might go down. I think you've already looked at this. real quick just because I need to catch my breath. Oh. Well, where should we begin? Oh well, isn't it obvious? We should begin with the thing. The mystery of the victim, I guess. How could one man, Detective Goodman, be killed in two places simultaneously? We should go to the police department evidence room. I'm not being very useful here, am I? Of 
poor Mr. Edgeworth. I know you're going through a tough time, Worthy. What with all those rumors? You were even in the defendant's chair this past December. There was that business with him not reading the officer's report. Ah, about the killing of the police department. It doesn't make sense, though, because... The chief of police was right about that. But I can't help but think, someone at the police department just doesn't like Edgeworth. said the plant changes descriptions. Oh, I watered him just now. I mixed in a lot, too. Mixed in what? My very own scientific attitude. I told you he's turning yellow. Talk to Lana. It looks like Miss Skye is in questioning. I hope the detectives aren't yelling at her. How did you kill him in two places at the same time? Can you imagine? How is she supposed to answer that? Wait a second. Didn't Mr. Gant say they'd arrested a suspect in the police department murder? Let's come back later. I really do feel like I ought to be allowed to discuss things with my client. Everyone looks deadly serious here. Well, there was a vicious murder of a detective down at the police department. Yes, but the same detective was also killed at the same time in the prosecutor's lot. It makes my head hurt. I'd like an answer, too. It doesn't make any sense. Well, first things first. Let's go check out the police department crime scene. You sound dead set on investigating! But don't mess up, or we could wind up dead! I doubt anyone wants more mysteries or dead bodies around here right now. But it doesn't look like anyone's going to help us much either. I don't really know what that was a reference to, the wind up dead thing, but... Is she just making puns? Like, okay. Must be one of the detectives. Here. It's even busier here today than it was yesterday. The detectives are running around so fast they're blurring. I suppose it makes sense. A detective did get killed here after all. 
So the evidence room, the scene of a crime. According to a pamphlet we got at the front desk. Here it is. She's like a kid at an amusement park. A real crime scene. Let's go take a look. This is not making a lot of sense. batteries. I can't help but feel he's going to do something naughty. Guard station. Oh no. All right, here we go. What's with the decor in this place? It's very eccentric. According to the pamphlet, this is the guard station for the evidence room. So beyond that door is the evidence room. Oh, wrong person. So beyond that door is the evidence room? The scene of the crime? It sure seems that way. Oh. What's wrong? It's those cacti. They're so prickly, so imposing. It's hard to think straight. Okay. What I want to know is, if this is a guard station, where is the guard? I have a feeling I know who he is already. Yeah, I, I mean, I thought we came here knowing that. You even asked her if she was fucking him. Why is he drying his clothes here? A leather jacket, leather pants. What was that called again? A punchy? These cacti are like my sister, encased in a cold, rigid shell with spines pointing in every direction. Just like her. Uh. I'm not sure I see the resemblance. It's more an attitude thing than a physical similarity. Looks like there's a video feed from the evidence room here. There's a light blinking below the monitor. It says, recording. I bet we could use this computer to check on who went in and out of there. That seems like a good idea, actually. The swinging door makes this place look like some kind of saloon. But look, it's nailed shut. You can't get in that way. Of course not, if you went in through here, the cactus would fall over. The evidence room is beyond that door. Let's just walk in. It won't open. You, you thought it'd be open? Look on the floor, a lasso. It looks like it's set up to trap something. Maybe someone was trying to catch a wild bull in here, but the lasso missed. Okay. We're, we're, we're done now. Why isn't what's-his-face showing up?
One steak lunch, please. Oh, it's you. Detective Gumshoe. Now's no time for chit chat, pal. I'm a busy man. What I really need is a steak lunch from Lunchland. You mean one of these? It's not for sale. I think I just heard the sound of his heart breaking. Now's no time for despair. We've caught our criminal. We just need evidence. The criminal? You heard about the stabbing in the police department evidence room, right, pal? Yeah? We don't need to flash back. On the same day that a detective was killed in the prosecutor's parking lot, another detective was killed at the police department? And the perpetrator? Do you have a suspect? Well, there was a suspect. Just arrested him, in fact. It's the biggest scandal to hit the station in ages. Everything's topsy-turvy. Detective Gumshoe, who was it? Listen, pal, all I know is I need a steak lunch pronto. Standing around here talking isn't going to fill my belly. Wait, don't leave. If you want to know more, head on down to the detention center, pal. Questioning should be over, so I figure he's down there having a good cry. Later. Was I supposed to do something here? Oh, is this how you... Okay. The fuck? We got a reaction! And there's clearly blood around the spines here. This room's pretty messy. Someone must have tripped over something and planted their head right in these spines. I think that might be more painful than being murdered. Wait, okay, so... here or walked here while wounded, you would think there would be well, that doesn't tell us much. We know she touched the phone. My sister isn't the murderer! But she did call you, didn't she? At the time of the crime? And her right hand is bandaged. Whose side are you on? This has nothing to do with taking sides. This means Lana's hand had blood on it. If he walked here, there ought to be blood that was dripping off of him.
why can't we go into the evidence room? A crime took place there. better about things a little. I mean, they caught the person who stabbed Detective Goodman, didn't they? Uh, yeah, I guess they did. Best not to go too far down that road just yet. Things will get confusing. What was that? That's what I'm saying. Me, a perpetrator? I'd say I was the perpetrated against, sir. That's what I'd say. Oh, no. Uh, oh, uh, hi. Greetings, sir. Wait, I know who you are. Officer Meekins. So you're a guard here at the detention center? No, sir. I'm not, sir. I'm a little lost patrolman, like a little lost lamb, sir. Oh, I get it. You're here to deliver a report. No, sir. How should I say this? You... You didn't, did you? Oh, my God. I would murder him just for turning that screechy thing on in our face. Perpetrating Officer Meekins reporting, sir! Uh, hun, if you're innocent, you, you don't have to do that. What? Now this is an unexpected turn of events. Patrolman with General Affairs, sir. I can hear you fine, Je Officer Meekins. I had some business that day, sir, and I went to the evidence room. The guard station in front of the room was empty. So, normally there's a guard at the evidence room? Is there normally? Because we totally have been in there and I don't remember it being guarded. That's right, sir, because evidence is kept in the evidence room. Now, the security officer was none other than Officer Marshall. Marshall? Then, sir, I happened to glance at the security room monitor. monitor. That's when I saw him, sir. A suspicious person in the evidence room. this guy doing? So what happened then? After that, sir, I... Everything went right, white, I saw red, and I blacked out! Is it just me, or is this episode more silly than the other ones? Like, I don't remember... Steel Samurai's interviews being like this, for example. How long were you out? Days? Um, might I ask, what happened to your hand? 
Sir, there was no one to bandage me, sir. So I did what I could to wrap it up, sir. But... Okay. Yet another similarity between this case and the one at the prosecutor's office. The first thing's first. Tell us how you hurt your hand. I don't mean to pry, but you are the perpetrator? You killed Detective Bruce Goodman in the evidence room? Please don't look at me with those sad puppy dog eyes, sir. If you have to label me as a perpetrator or victim, then label me victim. I would, but you happen to be in detention and alive as well as that. Yes, that's true, sir. I suppose you could say that. Did you know the victim, Detective Goodman? Well, sir, if I had to label him as a stranger or a total stranger, I'd say he leans heavily on the total stranger side. If you do that one more time with that horn, I'm going to murder you. I'm not going to pause. I don't care that we're surrounded by cops. I'm going to kill you, just so we're clear. Sir, I work in a tiny department, devoid of light or other creature comforts. I don't know any detectives. So if he was a total stranger, why did you supposedly stab him? I had no intention of killing him, sir. All right, that's it. I, I'm, I'm, it's murder. We're, we're murdering. About your hand. Did that happen during the course of the crime? I... don't you think you should just confess? There was nothing I could do! When the detective pointed that knife at me, I just hollered! And the next thing I knew, I was unconscious! Then when I opened my eyes, I was alone in the evidence room, sir! Alone because Detective Goodman had disappeared! What? Then when I looked down, I was gushing blood from my hand. The victim's body disappeared. That's some story. Do you think is Is this the knife? That's it, sir. Last night, that's the one. I was an apple, sir, in my dream, and I was being peeled. Yeah, that's totally gonna change. But now, sir, I remember! You remember what happened? The card! The card was the cause of it all! What? This ID card? 
Exactly, sir! That's exactly it! Can you tell me what it is you remember? Well, sir, you might say I'm a little lost patrolman. I'm about to say you have a... No violent threats on the live play. No violent threats. Setting a bad example. I didn't know Mr. Detective Goodman who is in the evidence room. And that's why you thought he looked suspicious. I entered the evidence room and asked the man to show me his ID card. That sounds by the book so far. So you asked Detective Goodman to show you his ID card. What did he do? Suddenly he pointed a knife at me. What? I assure you I was as flustered as you are right now. So I whooped and left at him. Detective Goodman pointed a knife at him. What happened then? Well, my eyes, everything went white. When I awoke, I was here. Right. Why was it they arrested you? What do you mean, Emma? Let's look at what we know. Officer Meekins didn't know Detective Goodman. And the victim whom he met at the scene of the crime didn't show his ID card. In other words, we have no way of knowing if the victim was really the victim. And if this body just disappeared from the evidence room... We don't even know if anyone actually died! did say something along those lines, but you still ended up here? They told me it had to be him, sir, on that day and time. Detective Goodman was definitely in the evidence room. That's what they said. But you don't remember the events clearly? No. But the videotape is quite clear. Videotape? From the security camera. I think we're gonna need to see that. And you waited until now to tell us this? Hey, Mr. Wright, look who's standing at the Chief of Detectives' desk. It's Police Chief Gant. And you're sure this is all, hmm? You know what it means if there is anything missing. Sir, 
I'm sure it's most likely totally perfect. Hi, little one. We checked all of his drawers, lockers, garbage can, under his seat cushion, behind his computer monitor, inside his personal coffee machine. I see. Well, if anything does turn up, you call me right away, deal? Yes, sir. We'll scour the place again, sir. Chief of Detectives looks a little flustered. Aha! Righto, my boy. How you been? Swim much? Hi, little one. Hi. Hi. Ho-ho, oh, Chief Gant! Reporting for duty, sir! Why are you saluting him, Mr. Wright? He's got that sinister beam again. Um... Is Edgeworth going to be okay? Oh, Worthy. Oh, you know. They're doing a little inquiry committee with him. Sounds like an inquisition. Yes, well, they've had no end of trouble with the boys since last year. You mean the incident at Gord Lake? It doesn't look good. Having a top prosecutor sitting in the defendant's seat does it. And you! You got someone found guilty in that case, right, Righto? Von Karma. A legend he was. Undefeated in his 40 year career. But in court, you fixed it so he was caught for forging evidence. I didn't do anything wrong. He did forge evidence. In any case, the prosecutor's office is in a bit of turmoil, you might say. Why, they do just about anything to restore their reputation. Now, depending on what the inquiry committee decides, it could be bad for Worthy. Right odd, I tell you. The detective getting killed on their own turf, too, I mean. They're being prosecutors? Scientifically speaking, it's impossible! Yes, but that's what the evidence is saying. Goodman was stabbed in two locations at the same time. That's what it says. What evidence is this? Now, now, Rido, I can't give away all our secrets just like that. Yet, yeah, why should Lana have a fair trial? In this particular, it's a little sensitive and I can't talk about it. I wasn't expecting much. You know, one thing I hate most of all is hiding stuff. Secrets can't stand them. But you know, it's a full-time job just keeping the Chief of Detectives trap shut. He was the one you were picking on earlier? You saw that? Whoops. I wonder if that was what he wanted the Chief of Detectives to do. Let's see if we can kind of discreetly ask him. Baby, what are you doing? Stop. 
I was wondering, could you take a look at this? Sorry, Raido. I'm through with that stuff. Maybe he'll have gone so we can talk to the chief. Sorry, you had to see that. Oh, uh, what exactly did the chief of police want you to do? Well, see that over there? That's Goodman's desk. He wanted me to check it for anything that might be a clue. They took away every last piece of garbage in the trash can. So, nothing belonging to Detective Goodman is still in here? Of course not. Well, except for this. What? You kept something? Why not? It's not important. You didn't even finish writing it. It's a lost item report, and only half complete. A lost item? Did Detective Goodman lose something? The date is on February 22nd. Better make a note of it just in case. I should really get back to investigating the police department crime scene. Actually, I was wondering if I could ask you a favor. Well, I never thought the day would come when Rido would ask me for my help. I was wondering if we could investigate the evidence room. Now, Rido. Uh, actually, I'm sorry. I don't need to investigate after all. Rido, please. Do I look like a selfish selfish man? Heck, if anyone asks me, Sir, can I borrow fifty dollars? I give them fifty dollars, no problem. So go ahead. Investigate that room to your heart's content. Knock yourself out. It just goes to show you never know until you ask. And for you, here, you can borrow this. This is a detective's ID card? That's a special card for guests, so don't lose it. 
Yes, sir. It's an honor. You just run along and do your best now. Later, folks. It looks pretty cool on my lapel, doesn't it? Just think, a real ID. You seem happy. Yes, sir. Because, sir, we get to go into the evidence room now. I think this place is a bad influence on the girl. Okay, it didn't actually add itself to the court record. Uh, oh, I need to go back to that office. Boy, I sure do love bouncing around. We have the ID card from... It won't open. The card reader is turned off. What is the security guard thinking? Howdy, partners. Well, what's made my Bambina sky so gray? I knew he'd come back. Officer Marshall. Why does it have to be him? What's that? Why does it have to be him look for? As you may have surmised, this here's my salute. Um, we are here to investigate the crime scene. Yeehaw! That card you got there on your chest. That's better than a sheriff's badge in these parts. Yeehaw! Well, what you standing for? Get along, little doggies. The crime scene's away. While we're here, I was wondering if we could ask you some questions. Sorry, cowboy, but I got new mind to take it with you, hombres. You're busy? Did I say that? I only said I didn't wish to speak with you. I was wondering if we could talk to you. Sorry, Bambina, but I'm off to roam the lands, like a tumbleweed on the wide prairie. Like a gun shooter loading, gun singer loading a six shooter, I say a little prayer. Bambina, that's okay. He's hungry, and we were informed that we could feed him this, which I keep pressing the wrong button. That's me. So Officer Marshall, you're from Texas? He is not. He's from L.A. No, I just saw a special on television the other day. Yeah, yeah, that I believe. Miss Starr sent this. W what's that? W what's wrong? A police stick lunch. I, I see. I don't see. I wonder what it means. All right, Bambita. You win. Ask anything. 
He's willing to talk. Yeah, yay. He's actually gonna do his job. Officer Marshall, you're in charge of security for the evidence room, right? You got good eyes, partner. It's an easy job and I'm grateful for it. Naturally, the Officer Meekins, oh, sorry. <laughs> Once again, actually, Officer Meekins at the detention center told us. Ah, that poor little doggy. Poor guy. I keep getting his name wrong and calling him Meekly. He told us something. He said that when this stabbing occurred, you weren't at your station. Well, maybe I shouldn't be telling you this. But since I got demoted from detective two years ago, Well, it might not look it, but I lost my fire for the job, you know? What were you doing when the murder took place? Well, I reckon I was galloping down the highway on the back of my steed, Zippy. Note, he was riding down the highway on his horse named Zippy. There's no need for people here anyhow. These new fangled machines do a bang up job of keeping an eye on the place. You mean the security camera system? I don't take to machines much. Kind of like that stewed broccoli they sneak in next to your steak, you know? Miss Star told us something. She said that you were a detective until two years ago. It was always my dream to be a rawhide wrangler on the scene of the crime. And that's all gone now. Like a drinky hole in a prairie fire. You're still investigating the SL9 incident with Ms. Starr, aren't you? That was my case. It's all solved on the record books, but it smells like a bad game of poker. I can't let it go. That's all there is to it. case was it? We've heard the name so many times, but no one tells us what actually happened. There are some things you're better off no knowing, Bambina. Anyway, that case is officially dead as of two days ago. days ago. The day of our case? That's right. The evidence transferals. Edgeworth was talking about transferals too. I know maybe... I know what maybe two of the machines in here do. Two of them? There must be a dozen! Like I said, Bambina, me and machines, well, I like them about as much as I like stewed cauliflower with my steaks. The easiest ones to understand are these here security cameras. If nothing happens, the tapes are automatically erased every few hours. And Officer Meekins and Detective Goodman, are they on one of those tapes? I reckon they might be. Might be? You're the security guard and you reckon? One more thing. 
When you go into the evidence room, you need an ID card. The card reader leaves a record of every ID card that passes through. That doesn't mean anything. Someone could tailgate in. I've seen that before somewhere. I haven't heard whether this is related to the case yet. Mr. Wright, I saw a number on that record just now. I've seen that number before. Well, one of the numbers was um, Goodman's number. Could you explain this whole transferal thing? We keep only evidence from solved cases in this room. They're kept here under presiding detective supervision for two years, so we can reinvestigate them if it turns out there was a mistake. What happens to the evidence after two years? He goes to sleep forever in the underground vault at the country county sheriff's department. That's what we call transfer. We do it every February. I see now. Transferal is like a funeral for an old case. Two years after a case is solved, it's closed forever. Dead. Never to be reopened again. Never to be reinvestigated. Oh, let's show him the badge. See this? This is the victim's ID card. Ah, that was the one on the ground in the parking lot. The number on this is... Five eight four two one eight nine. Officer Marshall, show us that ID card record again. Look, the fourth number, it's a perfect match. It was used at five fourteen, right before the stabbing. What's more? There's only one of them cards in the whole world. So, when the incident occurred, Detective Goodman was in the evidence room. But what did Officer Meekins say? I entered the evidence room and asked the man to display his ID card. Was it really Officer Goodman? All right, compadre, you win. I guess I can give you this ID card. Maybe I should show this list to other people with IDs. Well, I said other people, but let's show it to him. The sheriffs back in the Wild West didn't place much faith in evidence. This is neither Wild nor the West. But that and this are two different things entirely. Room. It took us forever to get here. It's quiet. The investigation must be over here. So this is the evidence room? It really is kind of like a graveyard. Graveyards are supposed to have a grass and trees. This feels more like a morgue. recommend going around smacking ghosts on the head, pal. So is it true what I heard? Righto, please. Do I look like a selfish man? 
It's true. Chief police, chief of police can't loan anyone 50 bucks? Even me? Oh, that's what you were talking about. Actually, I was put in charge of the investigation for today. Just for today? Boss for a day. But guess what? You got permission for the chief. So now, you're a boss for a day. Uh, okay. First of all, you'll want to have this. here there's no reason for the murderer to touch the spot if he fled out of the door this might just be something significant hey that's some pretty amazing stuff you got there pal what this it's called luminol testing fluid where'd you get your hands on that i'd like to get some too i'll just borrow 50 bucks for the chief do you get this, Emma? I buy it by mail order. It's cracking me up. Borrow from him now because I really do think that he's going to be in prison soon. I knew it! This is someone's handprint! What's the matter, detective? This locker, it's mine. It's yours? You you have to help me when they come to take me away. Promise you'll testify that I wouldn't harm a fly. You'll do that for me, won't you, pals? I'm counting on you guys. Believe me, you can't trust the police. You're a detective. That escalated quickly. I wonder if we were supposed to talk to him before we... Must have been one massive pool of blood. I've never seen anything like it. I'm not a professional. What's your opinion, detective? Hmm. Pay of blue blood. Maybe Detective Goodman was actually an alien? This proves that something really happened in front of that locker. I'll make a note of it on the floor plans. Hey, if you didn't want my opinion, you shouldn't have asked. Believe me, I regret it as much as you do. I think we've got everything we can get. You don't need an ID card to get out. I wonder what would happen if Officer Marshall cut the power while we were inside. Wow, look at this big pile of junk in the corner. It looks like a car door. There's a pair of handcuffs attached to the frame. Maybe the guy they caught was some sort of escape artist? There's something sticking out of here. It looks like a shirt. It must be evidence for a case. I wonder if Detective Ghost should put this here. There you go, pal, making me out to be some kind of slop. I'm not responsible for aliens here. Or for evidence here. <laughs> My tongue got tied. I bet that evidence locker was open recently. How do you know? If you leave things hanging out like that, evidence gets dirty or ripped. The guard checks on that kind of stuff and notifies the detective responsible. How many times have I had him breathe it down my neck about some silly evidence? Sounds like Detective Gunshu leaves evidence hanging out a lot too. So 
some sort of bulky equipment is gathering dust here. What a sorry looking fishing pole that is! That's my personal pole! I've seen that somewhere before. Right, pal, that's my metal detector! The one that led to solving the case out of Gord Lake, remember? Oh, right! It feels like it was ages ago! Not to me! I don't think I've seen this one before. What is that? That's a bug sweeper! I'm sure it will come in handy solving some case sooner or later. You can't judge a person or a machine by a cover. You gotta look at their heart! I'm guessing that's probably a reference to some future game that uses bug this bug sweeper. What's this? Blood? It's a little worn, but there's definitely a handprint here. It looks like someone tried to wipe it off. Mr. Wright! What if there are other bloodstains left in the room? We did that. What is a saw and paint doing here? Since the dawn of time, true art has always been a war against oppression. What? There's blue and yellow paint here. Are we witnessing the birthplace of the blue badger? Well, you might say this is my studio. Someone left a glove here, but only one? SL911. Detective Gumshoe, maybe? There you go, pal, making me out to be some kind of absent-minded detective. That's evidence from the case, you know. You mean SL9? It has a tag on it. Wow! Someone must have broken these... something big to make all these pieces. See the sticker on one of the pieces there? What shape were these pieces before it was broke? You want to try to put it back together? Good luck, pal. That's no job for amateurs. I spent a good three hours on that before I had to give up. That's why I always carry around a tub of glue! Well, this piece looks like the bottom. Let's try putting the rest in place. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow, I don't even know where to start. These pieces don't add up to anything. Maybe some of the pieces are missing? Let's try to put together as many of the pieces together as we can. Well, I didn't mean to give up. like a deep jag and a little jag. Maybe? Is that? Okay, yeah, that goes to get... Oh. 
Okay. Now it's like a smooth, long edge. are missing. Yeah, I got that far in two minutes myself. The problem is finishing it. <laughs> Liar. Were some of the pieces stolen? I bet they were missing to begin with. like the most stable kind of jar. I kind of understand how it got broken. look at here. If you put these pieces together, it makes a jar. There are two things that bother me. One, why are some of the pieces missing? Two, doesn't it seem a little unstable? No wonder it broke. I'll make sure to remember that the next time I make a jar. This one's open, and the red indicator light above the door is lit. That locker is coated with Detective Goodman's fear of it. Are you sure it's okay to leave it open like this? Well, it'd be hard to get it open again if we closed it. It's empty. I must have taken the contents elsewhere. All right, let's talk to him. So, Detective Gunshu, your boss for the day? That's right. It's an honor. After all, the murder took place right here in the police department. But if you're the boss, why are you all alone? Where are your underlings?
They are using yesterday's findings to prepare for tomorrow's trial. In other words, you got kicked out of the investigation again. I'm adamant, though. I'm going to take control and put this case to rest. In my own evidence locker, pal. You have a locker in here too, Detective Gumshoe? Of course. I am a detective after all. They gave me a locker that only I can open, pal. It seems like it's not good oversight. That seems like it could be abused pretty easily. Only you can open? I'll always believe in Mr. Edgeworth, no matter what happens. So, Mr. Edgeworth is with the Inquiry Committee right now. Why... Why is he even under Inquiry? The whole allegation is that he didn't listen to Meekums, but Meekums has been arrested as a murderer, so surely he was purposefully bad at telling Edgeworth what was going on because he wanted to delay and sabotage the trial or something. So, Mr. Edgeworth is with the Inquiry Committee now? They're trying to figure out who's responsible for the mess up in court today. I see. I guess this is what you call fate. Mr. Edgeworth just can't get away from that case. The case? The one we keep talking about? Because this is... This is a DLC for everybody else, but we literally just played it. That was the beginning of the end for Mr. Edgeworth. This place is more high-tech than you might think. Every locker is fixed so that only one detective can open it. Okay, but literally, what happens if somebody dies? Using an ID card. That's the thing, pal. ID cards can be lost. I'm on my third card since entering the force already. That sounds like a lot. Yeah, but I can't lose my own right hand. Right hand? Oh, you mean your fingerprints! Exactly, pal. The locker for each... The code... <laughs> the lock for each locker is coded with a fingerprint. So the only locker we can open is our own. Is that your son? Funny, they look like normal lockers. These are the latest model. There's a trick to the handles, see? The handles? On the other side of the handles is a sensor. And if the wrong person touches it, you get a shock. If that's what happened, my hand would be black and smoking every day. In any case, the locks aren't that obvious. There are even some people on the force that don't know about the fingerprint locks. That seems important. Oh, key open. So. I wanted to show him. Well, let's talk about this first. You can't open the lockers if your fingerprint doesn't match. If you can open it, they'll give you 50 cents. Note, the police department lacks faith in its lock system. After all, Detective Goodman was stabbed after opening his locker. But at the same time, he was found dead over the prosecutor's office. Allow me to say one thing, speaking as a detective. If I see a piece of evidence, I know nothing about, I say nothing.
Could you take a look at this? This is the ID card record of the people who came in here on the day of the stabbing. Ah, I heard the rumors. So it was Goodman who came in here at the time of the murder. Whoa! What is it? The second number. It's not your ID number, is it, Detective Gumshoe? Mr. Edgeworth. What? The second number on this list belongs to Mr. Edgeworth. I mean, he said that they engaged in the monthly February cleaning, so... That's not really surprising that he came down here. Like, that was already talked about. I feel like the bloat of this episode has gotten out of control. I bet Edgeworth was the most surprised of anyone. Because of the SL9 connection? That was Mr. Edgeworth's first big case, you know, two years ago. No, I did not know. That's kind of important. So if false evidence was used, no wonder, uh, what's her face? Lana thought that he was the one doing it. It was the first time the world knew Edgeworth was a man to be feared. Why would evidence from that case turn up now? Edgeworth has only been prosecuting for two years? I really thought it had been longer than that. I guess it's not over, pal. Maybe there are some loose ends left on that case. You think? Hey, that's it! That's the King of Prosecutors Award that Mr. Edgeworth got the other day. Were you at the awards ceremony, Detective? Of course, pal. I got an award for diligence myself. Congratulations. I was wondering, why is the award a shield? And why is it broken? Oh, there's a reason. I'll tell you what it is later. Apparently, he's forgotten. Now that was a bloody violent case. Violent? So it was a murder? A serial killing? A serial killing? Maybe I don't want to get involved in this after all. The killer made a mistake, and Mr. Edgeworth built his case around that to nab it. And this was two years ago? That put Mr. Edgeworth right in the spotlight and started the rumor battle. Rumors about forged evidence? It was supposed to be all cleaned up with the transferal the other day. It was the last job he ever did. Detective Goodman, that is. Huh? What do you mean? Detective Goodman was a detective in charge of the SL9 incident, you see. 
Why is all of this coming out piecemeal by tiny piecemeal? This should have come out much, much earlier. The fact that Goodman was the chief detective, the fact that Edgeworth was the prosecutor, the fact that it was Edgeworth's first case, literally all of this is coming out teeny bit by teeny bit like it's some kind of major clue re revelation or something and it's stuff that just simply should have been mentioned before this case is artificially bloated by withholding stuff in a sneaky manner that shouldn't be withheld the, the first four cases i liked and i enjoyed because they felt like real cases this feels so artificial the way everyone is just you have to drag information out of them and it makes sense with some of the other characters because it's like well they're an antagonist of course they're trying to keep me from but why the hell is gumshoe and to a certain extent edgeworth holding this information back okay i'm gone So, the switchblade knife. The victim took the knife out of the evidence locker himself? Hey, pal, look at the time. Was there something more important you needed to be doing? It's just that Mr. Edwards' inquiry committee should be letting out soon. I'm going to go give them my report for the day. It's a, it's a restaurant. Brochure. You mean the note written on the back of that flyer? The one that says nothing but no problems? Hey, it's Mr. Andrews we're talking about. I'm sure he could use a report like this. I believe in him. Who needs enemies when you've got friends like Detective Gumshoe? I'm off, pal. Later. I should probably see what Edgeworth has to say. <sighs> sure. Yes, my apologies. I am here as a call back to another case and really shouldn't otherwise be here. It's you! Have we met somewhere? Oh, he would never forget. That was his whole thing. Obsequious memorization and stuff like that. I made him famous and put his hotel on the map. Huh? Mr. Edgeworth, I beg your leave. So long. Is Edgeworth here? There, standing by the window, a teacup in his hand. Right. He has the hotel bring his tea service? Mr. Edgeworth, 
You're back from the district prosecutor's office inquiry? I am. By the way, uh, by the way, Detective Gumshoe was looking for you. Yes, he brought me the latest information, it seems. Really? Was it helpful? Apparently, a new French restaurant is opening near here. I think he was trying to console me somehow. Baby, he was asking you out, and from the look on your face, you know it. But good, we'll move on. The real info is on the other side, Edgeworth. Poor Mr. Edgeworth. I think this whole thing is really taking a toll on him. So, how did the inquiry committee go? Actually, they decided to treat this not as a case of concealing evidence, but as a communications error during the investigation. Well, yes. Concealing evidence? Yes. Apparently, there are some who believe that I concealed evidence. They gave me a warning. You were lucky this time. Again. Again. I've heard them say that so many times. Ever since that case two years ago. Pay for the trial tomorrow? Well, I'm still the presiding prosecuting attorney. However, something happened. They gave control of the investigation over to the police department. Police department? Yes. Any further investigation for this case will be directed by the chief of police, Gant. I can do nothing but wait for his results. I see. Why, I ask you, why? All along, I've done only what I believe is right. I have nothing to be ashamed of. But still, I've never seen him this out of sorts. All right, hon, let's talk about some evidence. Right, please, and the prosecutor on this case. You don't expect me to sit here and discuss it with you over a cup of tea. I'll pass on the tea. Tell me about the case. Mr. Wright, Mr. Edgeworth just told you no in a very polite manner. his face in the detention center and see what his bad number is. As I was saying, I... What's this? A record of ID card usage? Edgeworth, you went into the evidence room that day, didn't you? Just before the incident occurred, no less. Yes, that's true. Why, Mr. Edgeworth? Please don't look at me like that. I was asked to go by Chief Gant, no less. The Chief of Police? He wanted evidence for a case that wrapped up half a year ago. AI-16. He told me he wanted me to keep it here in the prosecutor's office. 
But it was solved, right? It would have to be if the evidence was already filed. Hey, here's my question. Why? How could he even access a locker if the lockers are keyed to policemen's fingerprints? Are there also prosecutor lockers? Because that doesn't make a lot of sense. The chief is never one to explain himself. In any case, on the day of the stabbings, I brought this back here. Can I ask what kind of case it was? I can't say. It really has nothing to do with this current case. curious about this other case. I'd better make a note of it. Stubborn as always. I told you this has nothing to do with the current case. Yeah, well, that's what y'all said about the rest of this stuff. The tag says AI-16. I know you. You've probably got a hold of some information already, right? It all has to do with that case you were working on. The SL9 incident. And some dark suspicion you were wrapped up in. You are the man who revived the worst memory of my life. I figured I'd be telling you about this sooner or later. He must be talking about his father's murder in the elevator. Okay, Edward, why don't you tell me about it? The SL9 incident was a heinous serial killing case. The head of the investigation was the deputy chief of police at the time, Damon Gant. That wacky old coot was involved in the case two years ago. He was a top officer, and it was my first time working with him. I was nervous. Wow, you get nervous too, Mr. Edgeworth? What I want to know is why the deputy chief of police was on the investigation. I mean, they said it was a serial killing, so... In truth, I used slightly more extreme methods than normal. We were dealing with a vicious murderer. If I let him go, blood would be on my hands. We won our guilty verdict, and the killer was executed. You didn't. Of course not. I didn't touch the evidence. Yes, I will do anything in my power to win a trial. However, I do have a code, and I follow it faithfully. By the way, Emma... The chief prosecutor wanted to know something. My sister? 
What? If you were still studying forensic science. Yes, of course. Just today, Mr. Wright and I were using this. Luminol testing fluid. Hmm. Well done. You might have use for this. Aluminum powder for taking fingerprints? It's been chemically treated for better adhesion. For me? Are you sure? We are the enemy, you know. I have no say in today's investigation. Do as you will. Edgeworth, I'm really... No need to thank me. Take your powder and these fingerprint files for everyone involved. Thank you! Let's get going! Our last investigation! I do seem to remember seeing a suspicious handprint somewhere. Alright. Can I use it? Okay. I can't use it just anywhere and everywhere like the little one. Well, before we go... Anywhere, I want to go to the detention center and I want to check and see what your ID number is. I'm sorry, sir, but I have no idea what this is. He's passing the buck. And I can't look directly at him. It's annoying. Well, we assume that it's him. Our investigation has turned up a suspicious handprint. Here, in the blood on the detective's evidence locker, let's use the secret weapon we just borrowed. Right, let's get started. First, choose a finger. A finger? Each finger leaves behind a slightly different imprint. So, let's choose the finger that will have left behind the clearest print. Um, I really can't tell the difference at a glance. I mean, this one? Now it's time to check for prints. Let me show you how it's done. Once the powder is spread, blow away the excess. Enter an E. That looks like fun. It's fine. If I blow on it, won't I get saliva on it? You did it! You found one! This looks nothing like a fingerprint. Now that you mention it, I guess it doesn't. What does it mean? I think it means we're out of luck. The person who left this handprint must have worn gloves. Don't tell me we've been wasting our time here. Calm down. That's just the way it goes sometimes with scientific investigations. But it does seem a shame. While we're at it, why don't we look for other prints? Seems like there are fingerprints outside the bloody handprint as well. Um. Yay! A print so clear it's dazzling! Let's match it up right away! Look at the fingerprint data we got from Mr. Edgeworth! And point out the person you think left these prints. 
how am I supposed to know who it was? I could make a pretty good guess. The bloody handprint and the fingerprints are in different places, right? It means the prints probably don't have anything to do with our case. So whose fingerprints will we most likely find on this evidence locker? I mean, I'm guessing... Gumshoe! So these prints belong to Detective Gumshoe! Something wrong, Mr. Wright? You gave me this so what look! It's because I was thinking so what. Okay. So we came up with nothing this time, but there's always next time! So, can I do it manually now? I cannot. There was a handprint here! Want to try using this? Let's check for prints! That's the spirit? Oh, but I have to warn you about something first! The area with the blood was wiped away, right? We only ended up finding it through chemical means. Any prints in that area will have been wiped away too. Oh, right. So that means no prints? Don't ask me! We must try to find prints that weren't wiped away. where the finger would have been but there wasn't any blood because that particular finger didn't leave blood this is not the most fun mini game I've ever done I doubt it would be Angel. It's not Emma. It's not Lana. It's not Gumshoe, thank goodness. It's not Goodman. It's Marshall. Interesting. I actually did not expect him to be the killer. These fingerprints, they... Who's are they? Is it someone I know? It's Officer Marshall. Huh? Officer Jake Marshall? That's got to be a coincidence. He's not involved in the crime. Emma. This is decidedly different from Detective Gumshoe's prints. The luminal reaction, the blood and the fingerprint, they're all in the same place. Oh, we have Jake Marshall's fingerprints on a white blood stain. And he was supposed to be guarding the evidence room and left. Why would Officer Marshall... It looks like our investigation is finally turning up some results. I guess this is what you'd call the size of evidence. I don't believe it. 
Babe, it's got to be somebody if it's not your sister. Well, obviously we're going to save our game because I don't want to lose our progress. Um, God, I think that was... Was that a three-hour video? I don't know. I think it was, though. I think it was a three-hour video. I'm so sorry. Uh, I don't know how to cut these any any smaller. They, they just sort of are what they are. Um, so what did we learn today? It honestly feels like we uh, didn't actually do much. We... We went to the scene of the crime We talked to Angel. And she told us that she was an investigator on SL9. And that Whatever happened on SL9, some, something went wrong, and everyone was sacked or demoted. So what did we learn total? We learned that SL9 was Edgeworth's first case. That there was a serial killer. That Damon Gant worked on the case with him that it was supposedly solved on false evidence So here's my guess. Just based on what we have so far. Gant either is the serial killer or 
knows the serial killer. Or actually, maybe Gant just had really strong, you know, like he wanted the serial killer put away. And he was the one who falsified the evidence. Either because he was willing to do anything to win and wanted to put the serial killer away. Or because he wanted to frame somebody else in order to close the case and get his own self or his own mate, whoever it was, off the hook. But so, Gant is the one that I'm going to say manipulated the evidence. People blamed it on Edgeworth. Including Lana. Lana has spent years campaigning against Edger thinking he was dirty. And Goodman Hmm. Was Goodman on her side or not? Do we even know it was Goodman who died? It's actually interesting that in all of the flashbacks and pictures, we have never actually seen his face. We have seen a... A locker that needed his fingerprints to open. And we have seen his ID card. But unlike previous cases where we've seen the victim's face, we have never actually seen his face. But okay, let's 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 set that aside for a second. Meanwhile, Detective Gant sends Detective Gant sends Edgeworth down to the evidence locker so that there'll be a record of him visiting. Then someone, I, I don't know. What happened in the evidence room? So there's a couple of problems with the evidence room. You need an ID card to get in, but you don't need an ID card to get out. So Edgeworth, we don't know when he left. 77777, whoever that, that is, I'm assuming it's Gant. We don't know when they left. 
it's looking like they were trying to set up Miles to be framed. He was sent down to the evidence room. It was, the, 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 the murder was in his car. The knife was in his car. What if Goodman was killed, stuffed into the trunk of Edward's car, and Edward didn't notice it, drove him to the prosecutor's block, but Goodman wasn't actually dead yet. They thought he was, but maybe he'd passed out. Maybe he kicked open the trunk, and Lana found him, tried to help him, got covered in blood, got the evidence, the knife from him. She wanted to call and tell someone what was happening, but she didn't dare keep the evidence with her, so she stuffed it in the muffler. That would explain how he got to the, the parking lot, which so far I have not seen anyone explain. So, so what if somebody stabbed Goodman in the evidence room and then shoved him into Edgeworth's car? If... If, if he died, if, if Goodman had died right then and there, then Edgeworth would have looked guilty. There was evidence of him going into the room right before Goodman did. There would, he would be, it would look like he went in, killed Goodman, and stuck him in his trunk to get rid of the body later. So if the, if the plan was to frame up Edgeworth, this would have worked beautifully. And Goodman didn't die. So, so, so that's my guess. My guess was that the plan was to frame up Edgeworth. Send him down there so there's a record of him going in. Not a record of him going out. Uh, kill Goodman a few minutes later. Shove him into a trunk. And, and, and then you're done. What doesn't work Is why why did they do it? We don't have a motive, and that's a problem. Maybe, maybe. We just need to play a little longer to get a motive. But that's that's what I think happened. They were trying to frame Edgeworth, and they screwed up. And Lana could either confess... She feels guilty. She feels guilty because she blamed Edgeworth, and it turns out he was innocent all this time, and she's been spreading rumors about him. That's going to be why. So rather than let him take the fall and be framed... She confessed. I mean, that's a lot. I, I think that's an overreaction, actually. But maybe she felt like if she told the truth, it would all get covered up. Anyway. So, it is... Uh, it's after one here. Uh, I really did not expect... Um, this episode to be this long. I, I, I do think it's been about three hours. So um, I'm going to cut off here because I have lost the ability to create words. Uh, this has been uh, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Uh, my name is Anna Mardal and I am extremely grateful to all of you for coming along. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.